not the church to please stand at this time. Glory be to God as I present to you the speaker of the hour, no other than our own Apostle Pastor Aaron Russell. Receive the man of God in Jesus' name. Praise the Lamb of God. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is a great and grand privilege again to be in the house of the Lord. Another time to declare his love towards us. And to know that in all things his name must be glorified. Eh? In all things his name must be glorified. He is the source of our strength. He is our all in all. He is the great creator. I thank God for everyone in the house of God today. Thank God for all first time visitors in the house. Amen. Amen. That God will bless you even as you come in the house today. Will you be free from, from your burden of sin. There is power in the blood. Power in the blood that You know, hallelujah. Thank God for the blood. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for the blood, the finished work, and Calvary. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. We started uh, 
last week and we were looking at the demands for conversion in his kingdom. We are in the kingdom of God. And when we come into the kingdom of God, there must be a change. The songwriter said there must be a change when the blood reach your heart. Amen. And there must be a change. Amen. I believe we stop at verse 5. Re, um, the five points. Renewal brings focus. Amen. We're talking about the renewal. Amen. When you're in the kingdom of God. And I give you four points yet last week. One was renewal bring encouragement. Amen. Renewal brings strength. Yes. Renewal brings support. Amen. Renewal brings focus. And this is where we are today. And 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16 and 18 says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Amen. Let us stand and declare the word of the Lord. Praise God. This is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. This is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Hallelujah. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Hallelujah. The things that are seen, it is just for a moment. But the spiritual things endure forever. Oh, hallelujah. The temporal will pass. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why we don't see you all going to the graveyard when somebody dies. Everything that we possess in this life, it doesn't matter how much money you have. Amen. You can't take it with you. It doesn't matter how big a mansion you build and how many cars you have and how many airplanes you might own. It affects it. You cannot bring none of that. It is only temporal. So the Bible is saying the spirit man is more important. Amen. So it is very important that we work on building our spiritual man. Because that's what's going to last. We spend hours and hours working night and day. Work all kind of overtime. How many hours try to build yourself. Amen. While the spirit man is dying. We need to refocus and know that our spirit man is more important, amen, than any temporal things. You need to spend more time with God, amen, to build up that relationship, amen, doing the things that we lost. Ah, renewal is a life-changing encounter with God. So when you are renewed and you have a renewed mind, it becomes a very, very powerful thing in your life. Because renewal is a life-changing encounter. We talk about when you become saved, you can't be the same person anymore because you are now born again. You are now a, a, new, a new man. The Bible says all things are passed away and all things become new. You are a new creation. Praise the name of Jesus. So renewal will cause a change in your life when you come in relationship and have an encounter with God. There can be no true renewal without experiencing God. There cannot be no renewal church unless you experience God. If you're not experienced God in your life, then guess what? You're not going to, amen, make any changes. You'll just keep going. But when you have that experience, knowing that God is real in your life, you see him acting out and carrying out his purpose in your life, then you have that encounter and it's going to cause changes. It's going to cause a renewed mind, renewed thinking, because you recognize that it's working. Oh, hallelujah. You'll recognize that it is working. But if you don't have that encounter with God, guess what? You will take it as it comes. 
But if you really push and push in and start to see God moving, and you know that I couldn't have done this without God. Amen. Amen. It will bring a change. Right. Oh, hallelujah. It must bring a change. How do we experience God's renewal? The Bible gives us the instruction in 2 Chronicles chapter 4, 7, verse 14. If my people were called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and we will heal their lands. So God given us three things here that we need to do in order to have that renewal. Hallelujah. If my people are called by my name, but first they have to humble themselves and they had to pray and seek my face and turn from your wicked ways. So you have a responsibility, church of God, that you're going to turn from your wicked ways. You're going to have to seek God, hallelujah, in prayer by reading the word of God. Then you can have that encounter with him that will bring renewal. So we need to have that renewal in our lives and we need to press through and read the word of God, spend time in prayer. And most of all, it's important because the first thing that come in play here, you need to be humble. Hallelujah. We need to be humble. Renewal brings, brings with it an eager and a passion of seeking God. So in order for you to be renewed, you got to have a passion for God. you got to have the passion to wake up. Because sometimes it's hard to wake up and to go in prayer. It's, it's, it's a challenging thing for you to get out of your bed and half an hour early. So that you can go spend time with the Lord. You know, you struggle with it. You know, but the thing is, you stay up late, and then you can't wake up in the morning. Yep. You stay up late watching all those movies that profit you nothing. Right. And nothing at all. Mm -hmm. You go and you watch till 2 o'clock in the morning, and when it's Sunday morning, you to come to church of God, you're so tired, you can't roll out of bed. Right. But you're busy doing everything else. Yeah. Because you think that was important. But that, that's just the carnal man that you're feeding, because it's not doing anything for the spiritual man. So we need to get to that place where the spiritual man starts being fed in our, in our lives. The spirit is going to rise above the flesh and we will crucify the flesh. That's the only way we can crucify the flesh is by taking heed to the word of God. It by applying the word of God to our lives, then we will see the change. Many of us as Christians, we don't see any change in our life. We wonder why did I change? Ah, nothing is going on in my life. Check yourself, there's something going on. You're not seeking God. You're not seeking to have an encounter with him. You're not seeking to get an experience that you're supposed to have with him. So you gotta get yourself checked and say, where am I? What am I doing that I'm supposed to be doing that I'm not doing? Am I spending time with the word of God? Or am I watching too much Young and the Restless? Too much All My Children? Too much of all these movies that they're having now? We spend more time around the television than spending time with God. We spend time listening to settler things than to spend time listening to the music, the Christian's music that's going to bring some kind of a encouragement in your heart. You spend time talking on the phone. Talking your brothers and your sister and trying to, to, to make a name for yourself instead of bringing glory to God. So we're using all this medium that the devil put in, our, in us to, to entice us that we spend time doing that and not recognizing the devil always give you something to do to occupy your time because his purpose is to take your attention away from where it belongs, to take away your focus from where it belongs. Your focus is to be upon God. And you are the one that create that have to create that environment. Nobody can create it for you. No pastor can create it for you. When you come to the house of God, you're just sentimental for that moment. Can't wait to get out because you have something else on the agenda outside that you think is more important. But if you sit in the house of God for extra 10 minutes, it's going to bother. You start becoming easy. Because you don't have the appetite. You don't build up the appetite to sit in the house of God so you can hear the word of God that the spirit, spirit man is going to be strengthened. Why? Because the carnal man is there budging you. I need to get home. I need some food. You leave the rice and peas and, and, and the fire. You leave the, 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 the slow cooker on. You leave the, the, the oven going with your roast in it. And your mind is not even here. You're here in body. So we have to get that place that we will focus our attention on the things of God, the things that are going to build you up. And in the latter days, when your life and hurt is ended, amen, you know where you're going. Many of us as Christians, we think we're in our dying bed and we're not even sure where we're going because we're so consumed. 
with even the cares of the world, even on your dying bed. You still try to put your house in order on your dying bed. And every day you have to live as if it's your last day. Oh, hallelujah. So we need to renew our mind. This scripture takes place with King Solomon declaring, dedicating the temple and ask God for his present to come and dwell in this place. God speaks to Solomon and gives him an ongoing instruction for his people. This verse is not just for Solomon. This is for the church today. And the verse says, if my people were called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face. So God is giving Solomon the instruction what his people need to do to keep them going right into eternity. It is not just a one-time experience. It is something that you're going to do every day. You're going to get better at it every day. Oh, hallelujah. Many of us, we don't, we don't we pray the same prayer every day. Some of us, it's only saying our, our Father prayer until now. What we're taught by our parents from way back then. Because we still haven't got any further. But we have to get to a place where we build that relationship. Where you can talk to God about every and anything. Because he's now the director of your life. And he is your focus. Because you recognize, I need him. Brother David said, he is the present help in the time of trouble. Oh, hallelujah. But we today, when we are, everything is good, we don't need him. But when we are in trouble, we want to find him. But if we can build our relationship with him before we get into trouble, when he, you are in trouble, you don't need to worry. You, can, you know he's already there. Because you've already been connected. You got to stay in connection. You can't allow nothing to move you from being who you are and allow the presence of God to be over you. So we must build an ongoing relationship. God laid out several conditions to Solomon which have this ongoing relationship. The first condition is one of humility. Humble yourself. Of all of the things God could have been given, the first thing he has given is what? Humble yourself. You must be have humility. So the word humble means to be in subjection, to live in a state of continual surrender. Not to me. You see, you, you got to live in a state of always surrendering yourselves and your will to God, not to me, not to your pastors. It's to God. Amen. When you humble yourself in the presence of God, you know what? You will know how to humble yourself in the presence of everyone. Amen. And I say this, and I say this many times. Humble or humility, it is not a weakness. It is strength in control. Oh, hallelujah. Because if you look at arts, for instance, for those who are familiar with arts, when they're wild, they're strong and they're powerful and they're still wild and they can run and they can do all these things. But when you actually take them out of the wild and break them, they don't lose their strength, do they? It's just that they now have control. They're still powerful. But they now what? They have it under control. So, so it is with Christian. When you humble yourself and have humility, it doesn't mean that you're weak. Because when you hear about humility, you think it's a weakness. No, but it is strength under control. Oh, hallelujah. Because when you're supposed to do something, you're, you're, because of the Holy Ghost and the power, it holds you back. When you want to tell somebody your mind, you recognize, I can't tell nobody a piece of my mind because I got to hold that back. Amen. It is restrained. Because the Holy Ghost and power is going to restrain you. When you want to tell somebody and give them a piece of your mind, you're going to say, I can't do this because of what, who, who, I, who I represent. I represent the king of all kings. I represent the lord of all lords. Amen. So I must keep what comes out of my mouth pure. Even though your heart is saying something. And even your actions, you want to punch the person. You want to do something drastic. But you have to hold back humility. Because of the power of God in you. It holds you back from doing the wrong thing. And, do the, and always try to do the right. That's what humility is. It is not weakness. It is strength under control oh hallelujah when we humble ourselves we are giving God control of our lives 
To humble means to be brought low. Hallelujah. It's to be brought low. To take yourself off this pedestal and allow God to elevate you. Because many times we want to elevate ourselves and we tend to fall hard. Amen. Amen. Because God is not in it. And God, is not, God said, whatever he raised up, will stay up. Amen. Because no man, amen, can bring him down. Amen. Because who God has exalted, he has exalted. No man, no devil, no body can remove that person when God raised you up to where your heart to be. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. In the Welsh Revival in 1904, the revival was sparked by one young man named Ivan Robert, who had an incredible experience with God. His experience flowed from a single prayer, and this was his prayer, bend me, O Lord. That was it, bend me, O Lord. Allow me to be broken before you. And I could understand this because David was such a powerful king, but he said a broken and a contrite heart, he will not despise. So when you come to God in brokenness, you know what, he will not despise you. Oh, hallelujah, it's okay to be broken. It doesn't mean that you're weak. Many times we think we can't, we, especially us men, we're going through things, we don't think we can cry. We don't think that because we think it's weak. No, it's not weak. It, it's sometimes you got to bro be broken in the, in the presence of God so that he can have his way in your life. Oh, hallelujah. So are you allowing God to bend you even this morning? Are you allowing him to, to be that person that bending you and breaking you and molding you and making you in what you want it to be? Or you want to make yourself who you think you should be? Because if you are doing it, nothing's going to happen. You're going to understand that you keep failing. You keep running into roadblock. But if you allow him to break you and bring you to the place that you are to be, then guess what? You will see the changes. Because many times you're saying, oh, I, I, I'm trying to do this. Nothing is happening. The reason why nothing is happening is because you're trying to do it. You got to let go and let go. When you allow God and give God control over your life and submit your life to him, guess what? He is going to make the way. Even when it looks like you're not going to make it, he is going to make the way. Why? Because he knows the way to the valley. He knows the way to the wilderness. He knows the way to the mountain. And he will take you through. He will. Oh, hallelujah. But you got to get to that place of humbleness. Humbling yourself opens your life to blessings and benefits. Listen to this benefits that comes from being humble. God opens our lives to God's guidance. When you humble yourself, God opens your life to his guidance. You trust God to guide you. You trust God to do what's right for you. You're not making decisions based on your puffed up mind. You humble yourself before God. And you say, God, what is your plan for my life? Many of us, we are going on and we don't even know what is God's plan for your life. Because you're not seeking God to find out. Why? Because you think that you know so much. That you don't need God's direction. But the, here it is, Solomon is saying that we as a people, we need to humble ourselves. And God will give us the guidance that we need in order for us to succeed. Many of us are not succeeding today. Why? Because we are going off our own minds. We are doing our way. It can't be our way. It's got to be God's way. That's why we have the constitution. Oh, hallelujah. That's why he left his word. This is the constitution for every Christian. And if you are not doing his will, amen, you can search the word of God and you will know. He didn't leave us blinded. He didn't leave up to our own vain, puffed up minds. He has given us his manual, his instruction manual. You realize when you go to the store and you buy a new TV or you buy whatever, a car, whatever it is, you got a manual? Yes, sir. Glory. And many of us get in trouble trying to do things and fix things on your machine or whatever it is without reading the manual. And guess what? You cause havoc. So, so it is with us as Christians. God has given us a manual. If we want to be successful in the things that we're doing, we've got to go to his guidance. Yeah. We need to seek how we do things in him. Yeah. In his kingdom. This is his manual in the kingdom. So we got to know this manual so that we can live our lives pleasing to God. Because if we try to live our lives ourselves, we're going to fail. We need the manual. How many, have, how many of us have VCRs in your home and it's probably old technology now, but you have 
keep players in your house, but you put a DV in and you only know how to press the play. You don't know anything else about it. Why? Because you have not read the manual. Many of us are driving cars, your cars, you only know how to get in there and start it and put it in drive and drive. You know nothing else about the car. Why? You don't read the manual. Yes. So it is with us. We have got, here's our manual. We need to start reading in order for us to get to the place that we need to be. So when we, when we humble ourselves and start reading the word of God, his blessings will be upon us and he's going to give us guidance. Hallelujah. Humility allows us to go to, to know God's grace. In order for you to know God's grace, you got to come under humility. Amen. In order for you to have grace. Humility gives us gentleness. You know, sometimes we wonder why some of our Christians are so rough and so hard. We talk about the heart becomes so hard and so callous. You know, because we have no gentleness, we have no humbleness, we have no, we are so, think we are, we are leave out of the world with a rubber, rubber, that rugged muffin nature, that toughness, and you come to the house of God and you still carry that same roughness. Amen. You still come in here and you still acting so puffed up and think you are so powerful. But when you come to the kingdom of God, you got to get to a place of humbleness. You are not being subjected to man, you are subjected to God. We cannot live the same way we used to live in the world. Hallelujah. When the world, you did worldly things. When you're in the kingdom, you do kingdom things. You start to apply kingdom principles. The church has not been impactful because we're not on the, the humility that God called us to be. We are so puffed up, we think we know where we are going. Oh, hallelujah. We think we know where we are going. We don't know where we are going. This is our guide. If we would know where we're going, we would need him. That's right. he, didn't, he would need to die. Amen. To give us life and to bring us back into right standing. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. He wants us not to be independent of him, but relying on him yeah. to take it humbleness of heart in him. Yeah. Humility gives us spiritual garments. So you see, when you're as, as a Christian, as a big person of God, and if you don't have humility, you're unclothed. You got to have the, 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 the humility that clothes you. Oh, hallelujah. It will clothe you and it, it, the glory of God will be seen in, in that humility in you. Somebody will look at you and say, man, you're a changed man. Yeah, because why? You're in robe. Oh, hallelujah. In humility. They, they're not seeing you as the person they used to see. They're not looking at you as the same person because there's, a, there's been a change. Something happening in you. The humility, the thing, to, the way you used to talk, you realize you're not talking like that, like that no more. The anxiety you used to have, you don't have that no more. Because now you're taking oh, your humbleness and you're just falling and leaving yourself in the hands of God and say, Lord, you lead me and I will follow. Because you now have on the garments of humility and humbleness of heart. Humility leads us to true greatness. Humility leads us to true greatness you want to be great you got to humble yourself in the sight of God and he will raise you up yes. oh hallelujah he'll bring you where he wants you to be yes. humility gives us eternal glory hallelujah. oh hallelujah it is not just temporal we are working towards an eternal glory and if we stay humble then God will lead us and take us there the second condition that God gives to Solomon is that the people are to pray we are to call up on God. We are called to pray and spend time with God. Church, it is such an important thing about prayer. You would never understand how powerful prayer is and still you start encountering a prayer life with Christ. The church today, they are locking. We don't spend time in prayer. I thank God for Southeast of Assembly. Amen. We, got a, we have a very powerful prayer meeting going on. God is great. Amen. Amen. And that's why God is going to bless us. Amen. Because we know where our strength comes from. That's right. We know who is in charge. That's right. We know who we need to go to. That's, right. that's why we're having miracles. That's why we're having these healings. That's why we're having all this deliverance going on. Why? Because we know how important it is as a church Amen. that we should pray. Right. Hallelujah. What is prayer? Prayer is Man's giving God the legal right and permission to interfere in earth's affairs. 
I want you to understand this. I want, to want you to get this in your spirit. Because many of us, we don't pray no more. You know why we don't pray? We get no answers. But you got to pray correctly. Because the Bible says if you don't pray right, you pray amiss. Prior is man's given heaven earthly license to in influence earth. This is not the power of prior. Prior is man given heaven earthly license to influence earth. Prior is a terrestrial license of celestial interference. Oh, hallelujah. Prior is man exercising his legal authority on earth to invoke heaven's influence on the earth. Prior is powerful. Oh, hallelujah. Prior is powerful, church. Amen. We need prior in our lives. Amen. It is very important. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 talks about that. If my people are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Yes, oh, hallelujah. He said, I will hear from heaven. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And you will heal your land. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Luke, Luke chapter 18 verse 1 to 2. Ephesians 6 verse 17 to 18. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 19. Matthew 16, 17 and 18. Matthew 18, 18 to 20. All these scriptures were given to mankind and given mankind the authority and the prerogative to determine what happened on earth. You see, we have that authority to prior to determine what happened on earth. Without prior, we don't do, we're not helping. That's why the Bible gives us instruction even for us to pray to our pray for our government. Oh, hallelujah. We cannot cease praying even for our government. If we want changes in this world, we got to go to God and we got to go to him in prayer. Because he will not interfere unless you invite him in. You remember in, the, in Genesis, the Bible gives us dominion over the earth. He has given us dominion. The earth is ours. God is not causing havoc in this world. Man is causing problem in the world. Right. Oh, hallelujah. And God will not intervene in this hurt unless we invite him. That's right. So that's why the church of God needs to pray. Hallelujah. If you want something to happen to your life, God said he already know what you need. That's right. That's he said, I, I know what you need. Yes. I am your heavenly father. Yes. I see that you need the deliverance. Yes. But unless you ask me to intervene in that situation, I can't do nothing. I can't touch nothing. I see that you need this. I see you need a new car. I see you need a new job. I see you need everything that you need. But guess what? Until you invite me in. So many Christian things you don't need to pray. But it's a must. It's a criteria for you to have a strong Christian life. You have to pray. Yes. Hallelujah. He will not come and intervene unless you ask him to come into it. Yes. Hallelujah. In fact, a careful biblical study of God dealing with man and the herd reveals that he did not. He did nothing on earth without the cooperation of man. That's right. <laughs> Church of God, prayer is important. Amen. That's why he said, humble yourself and pray and seek my face. And then he will do something. Oh, hallelujah. He's not going to do nothing until you get to that place where you become humble in his presence and you start seeking his face and you start praying. Then he's going to hear. Then he's going to intervene. So the church of God, we need to pray. For every action taken by God in the herd, the realm and require an involvement of a human being. Every single one of them. Man has to be in the air. God needs us. But we need to ask him to prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Make your request be known unto God. He will not do nothing for you unless you invite him in. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. When you look at the word of God, the involvement of the flood, the humanity, what, what happened there? Noah. 
God used Noah to do what? To build the ark. Oh, hallelujah. For the creation of the nation, he needed Abraham. Oh, hallelujah. You remember what happened to, to Abraham? He said, get thee out of your country. And I want to go to a land that I'm going to show you. And I'm going to make a nation out of you. And today we are a part of that nation. Oh, hallelujah. We need, God need us. Oh, hallelujah. And we need to go to him in prayer so that he can manifest himself. To lead the nation of Israel, he needed Moses. Oh, hallelujah. Moses in the, in the back of the bush, he, he caused fire to come up to get his attention. Oh, hallelujah. So he need us, church. We, God need us to cry out to him. Pray. Seek his face, church. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He needed Daniel to take his people out of captivity. Oh, hallelujah. Daniel was a praying man. The Bible says he prayed three times a day. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That even the enemy plot against him. But God used Daniel through prayer, hallelujah, to release the children of Israel out of captivity. Church, we have to pray. It is important, church. Oh, hallelujah. To defeat, to defeat Jericho, he needed Joshua. He needed Joshua. He needed people to move and to walk around the, rock, the, the, the city, the walls of Jericho. Oh, hallelujah. He said, walk around it. Don't say nothing. But on the seventh day, a warrior to shout. Oh, hallelujah. He shouted and all the walls came tumbling down. It is the power of prayer, church. Oh, hallelujah. If you want the power of God to manifest in your church, you need to be a praying church. You need to be a church that cry out in God and in ashes. You need to go in the presence of God. He says in, in some things can only come through prayer and fasting. So when we are fasting and praying to God, great things are going to happen. No enemy can destroy you. No enemy can conquer you. Because God is with you. Because you call upon him. And he said, I will hear. And I will come down. And I will intervene in the situation. And I will heal your land. I will heal your situation. I will make your life better. I'll make your life stronger. I'll make you be a mighty man of valor. A mighty woman of God. Church of God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. He needed Joshua. For the preservation of the Hebrews. For the Hebrew, he needed Esther. You remember what he has to use Esther. Yes. Amen. When they wanted to kill out all the Jews. Oh, hallelujah. Esther got to pray. He asked her fasted. I said, I want to pray. And I got to fast. Go and tell my people. Get ready and fast. Because if I don't fast, I can't go before the king. I will get your murder if I go out before the king. But go and pray and fast. And see what God is going to do for us. They prayed and they fast. And he went in the presence of the king. The king put out the scepter and said, you're welcome. Oh, hallelujah. And the decree has sent out. The decree, the decree was sent out. Oh, hallelujah. The same man that plot against you. Oh, hallelujah. The same plot turned against him. Oh, hallelujah. He and his old household was put to death. A church hard to pray. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. For the sake of salvation of mankind. Amen. He needed. Amen. We need a man. Amen. We need the man. Amen. So he need to become a man. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church of God. Amen. In order for the salvation plan to fulfill, to come true, he got up with that hurt suit. Oh hallelujah. He had to become like one of us. Oh hallelujah. Christ was in the man. Oh hallelujah. God was in the man. Oh hallelujah. So that he could go to the cross. Oh hallelujah. Die for Adam fought in race. And give us back what we have lost. Fellowship. Communication. Oh hallelujah with God. That's why 
why the church needs to pray. Oh, hallelujah. He needs to pray. He become a man. Oh, hallelujah. In harder for us to have salvation. Prayer is very important, church. Pastors and churches have to get serious about prayer. Oh, hallelujah. Continuous prayer in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Sunday morning worship is not, it's just a show for many people because that's when they put on their nicest dress, their nicest shoes, and they wanted everybody to see their new dress, their new shoes, and how they look this morning. Oh, no, but when you come to prayer meeting, you come in your jeans, you come in your sackcloth, and you come in whatever you wear, and you just cry out to God, and God hears. We come to the church of God in the Sunday morning. It's a form of godliness. Oh, hallelujah. There's no power in the church of God because the church is not praying. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We can't say we are a New Testament Christian if we don't have a prayer life. We cannot say that we are a New Testament church if we don't have a prayer life. Oh, hallelujah. Prayer is your lifeline to God. Amen. Church of God, prior yes. is your lifeline to God. The question is, are you using it? Amen. Are you using Amen. what he has given to you? The third condition that God gives Solomon is to seek my face. Amen. Why does God give both prior and seek it? These are, are the same, do you think? No, they're not. Prayer is about communicating and seeking is about desiring. You see, prayer is communicating. But the Bible says, he will grant you according to your desires of your heart. So when you desire something, you're going to seek it. That's right. Huh? That's right. When you desire something, you seek it. You desire a job, you go look for one. You desire a new car, you go look for one. You desire a new house, you go look for one. You desire a husband, you go looking for one. So when you seek something, you want to go find it. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So it's very important that we understand that seeking means your deep desire. To find, to look, to secure. So when you, you want to find, you want to secure it. And that's what we need as a church. We need to find God and secure him in our hearts. Amen. That he is the first thing you need in the morning. Right. And the last thing you need at night. Yes. Before you close your eyes to go to sleep. Yes. Not knowing if you're going to wake up in the morning. Yes. Because many went to sleep and never wakened. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. This is not a passive attitude, but it's an aggressive action. Literally, it is to pursue something until you have it. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. That's what seeking is. You, you got to go after it until you get it. Yeah. You want to decide. You got to go and make sure it's been fulfilled. Oh, hallelujah. What, is, what are you seeking from God today? What, what do you give a praying for? You need to keep going, keep going, keep going. You have the desire to, to receive it. You must keep going, keep pressing. You can't give up, church. Amen. It took us 10 years. Right. 10 years. Praying, right. looking, seeking. Numbers, numbers of numbers of places we have been through. Desiring a place that we can call home. Oh, hallelujah. And because we keep seeking, keep desiring, God... God caused it to happen for us. So it is very important that we seek. One of the problems in the, in the life of Christians is that they stop seeking God. Yet they still come to church. It's become a ritual. We go to the house of God because it's now a norm. They show up for Sunday morning service, Sunday evening service, as well as in Bible studies. But their passion is gone. They are, they are there in person. But their passion is gone. 
The excitement of going to the house of God has faded. The thrill of experiencing God's less, uh, lesson, our God, what God can do in the life, is all gone. We come to church with no expectation no more. We come because we know how to get here. We don't come anticipating a move of God. In the olden days, somebody comes to the church of God, they expect miracles. Today we come expecting nothing. It become a ritual. Oh, hallelujah. That's not what God, we, we come expecting the move of God. Amen. Every time you come to the house of God, you're coming what? Expecting the move of God. God. If I had to pinpoint the top 10 spiritual issues in the church, this would be the top three. We seek, need to humble ourselves, pray, and seek God's face. Oh, hallelujah. We as a church, we need to do it. This is very important. God stop moving when we stop seeking. Church of God, stop, God stop moving when we stop seeking. We don't see the movement of God because we don't want it bad enough. Hallelujah. We're not seeing the move of God because church of God, we don't need it. We don't want it bad enough. We need to want it bad enough so that God is going to come true for us. Churches and Christians stop growing when the price gets too high. When we have to start spending time and hours in prayer, guess what? You fear the price is high. Your time is more valuable to do something else. But we've got to get to that place where it becomes our priority. Oh, hallelujah. What happened when Christians stopped seeking God? The saddest thing about Christians not seeking God is the fact that we lose out on what God wants to do in our lives. When we stop seeking God, we are losing out on what God wants to do in our life. The moment that you stop seeking, the moment you stop seeking, oh hallelujah, the same moment God stop doing what he had to do. We start losing. This time we stop seeking, we start losing. As a church, we got to be consistent. Consistently seeking God. Hallelujah. I'll give you five things. And I'll close here. Last of provision when you stop seeking God. You get the last provision. The Bible says in Matthew 33 verse 16. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all things shall be added. So when you have the desire. To seek God. Guess what? Provision going to come. Hallelujah. Last of protection. Oh hallelujah. Psalms 119 verse 10 and 11. With my whole heart have I sought thee, O Lord. Oh, let not wonder, let me not wonder from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I, I might not sin against thee. Loss of presence, Isaiah 55, verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Losing loss of promises. Lamentation 3, verse 25. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. The soul that seeketh him. Number five, loss of purpose. Jan Je Jeremiah 29, 1 verse 11 to 13. For I know the thoughts I think towards you. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an unexpected hand. Amen. Then shall he call upon me yes, and he shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with your whole heart. Praise the name of Jesus. What area of your life need to be revived this morning? You need to go to God in prayer. What do you need to hand over to Jesus and let him rebuild this morning? What is in your life that you believe that you need God a renewal in it. God need to come through for you. What are year of your life in the rock of his salvation? What year of your life that you need to know that I want to hide myself in the rock of his salvation. Knowing that he's capable. He's a God of protection. He's a God of provision. He's a God that is capable. He's a God that can do all things. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Church of God, you need 
to understand. These three things we need to do at all times. At all times. If my people, and the word of God said if, you mean that you don't have to do it, but if you, if you desire something, if you need me to work in your life, I first, I want you to humble yourself in my presence. I want you to humble yourself and surrender your life to me. Oh, hallelujah. Not to your pastor, but to me, God. And I said, if you humble yourself and pray, and you seek my face and pray and talk to God about everything that's going on in your life, you got to understand there's no secret in your life that God is not aware of. Everything that's going on, you can hide it from mommy, you can hide it from daddy, you can hide it from your husband, you can hide it from your wife. But guess what? You cannot hide it from God. Everything is naked and hoping before him. And he's looking at you and he's saying, look at her. Look at him. He thinks he can fix his life. And she can fix her life. And I am here with my hands stretched out. Want to work on your behalf. But you refuse to ask. You refuse to say, Father, I have sinned and come short of your glory. I am a broken vessel in your present. David said, a broken and a contrite heart I will not despise. You're coming to God broken, crying out to God and say, God, help me in this situation. He hears. And you will answer prayer. Whatever your deepest desires today, seek God. Seek Him to see what He's going to do for you. Because He wants to do something for you. If you are here in the house of God today, and you need God, you need God to do something for you. There's some, something great desire in your heart. And you trust God that God can do it for you. You don't need to confess to man. You just need to talk to God. You just need to say, God, you know, I've been going through this thing for a long time. And Lord, you know my heart desire is this or that or that. And Lord, I am bringing it to you this morning. And I believe in you that you're going to make the changes. Hallelujah. I learned today, God, if I don't ask, Amen. you're not going to do nothing. If I want you to influence my life, I'm going to invite you in it. I'm going to allow you to ask you to come and be a part of my life. So that you can influence my life. That I can be what you want me to be, not what I want to be. Because what I want to be is not what, if it's not what you want to be, God, it's not going to happen. But Lord, if it's what you want to be, God, then it's your will be done. And not my will, Lord. That you will lead me in the path that I should go. Help me to make it, Lord, where, you desire, where I desire to be in you, Lord. Because, Lord, this is only about you. It's only you that can do the work in me. Yes, You're going to cry out to God today. Yes, and expect him and ex be expectant. That he's going to do something for you. You're going to come with that expectation. Yes. Knowing that he will do something for you. I'm going to ask the musicians to come. As we'll sing this song. Hallelujah. Softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. Seen at the portal, he's waiting and watching, watching.